First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. No doubt. Voodoo, you running from the magic. Tonight, dialogue is metaphysical, inner meanings, and secret teachings. So you know how we going in tonight. For those who have never been here before, we welcome you. For those who have been here before, then you know what it is. You know what we're getting ready to get into, and damn it, we do it the best. Ain't no other nation better than when it comes to the metaphysics and getting it in and telling you exactly what these symbols mean on the ancient Egyptian walls. All right, so, before we get in, let's bring in my co-host, Brother L, are you with me? Peace, God. Peace, God. Peace, God. Peace, God. How you doing tonight? Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, How's God wonderful. doing? How's God doing? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. We're getting ready to get it in tonight, and... um over some things, and it seems like for some reason, mm, all of a sudden, we have no problems, brother. <laughs> what do you think about that, brother? All, all the problems we had last week, we had no problems this week. Wonder why? I wonder why, boy. <laughs> I wonder why, boy. Well, we want to see if any problems arise after we start driving this, um, this insane um, craziness tonight. So, um, let's see here. Um, like I said, we're going to, this is a metaphysical dialogue. We're going to go into the inner meanings and secret teachings. And, um, of course, you know, we're going to go through some so-called holy scriptures and, you know, and um, decode some of these um, particular, I guess you can say, stories, you know, oh, um, as allegorical as they are, you know, as allegorical as they are, Brother L, you know, um, people still taking them literal and historical. And um, that's been um, a lot of the problem and the wrong interpretations, you know. And if you're not going by the supreme axiom, as above, so below, as within, so without, um, really, you're not on course. 
No, they're not. And for those that want to know, you know, really for those who want to know more about the physical sciences, then you can go to my website, www.drlimelbay.com. That's D R A L I M E L B E Y. That's drlimelbay.com. And you'll go to the section, Metaphysical End of Religious Confusion. The Metaphysical End of Religious Confusion. And that right there will get you up to par if you have never come to this show before. And even if you have come, it will sharpen you, you know, sharpen your sword, your tongue, as well as also that mind. Yes, it will. um, Oh, yeah. And it will get you ready for um, the real science of metaphysics. Now, the word metaphysics has been um, thrown around, and a lot of people don't decode it. But basically, it's the science of life. It's basically um, explaining the physical, you know, and not just the physical, but that which affects the physical and influences the physical, meaning astrological um, influences, as well as also chemical, harmonial, as well as the way in which that the environment dictates and plays a part on the design and structure of human mm-hmm. life. You know, that's really what metaphysics is. Many have taken it out and think it's just UFOs. It don't got nothing to do with UFOs per se. No. You know, because no. if, cause if, cause if the person is talking about UFOs and don't know how to t- and don't talk about transforming the body into a macabre and turning their auric field inside out, you know, they really they're not talking about a UFO. You know, uh, because there's a such thing as an IFO, which is an identified flying object, which we know exactly what it is. An unidentified right. flying object, right. you know, is something in which that oftentimes is government design, in which that we know that Adolf Hitler back in 1940s were working on. And even before the 1940s, he was actually, they was working on, the Nazis was working on um, UFO design or aircraft, very similar to the ones in which that have often seen throughout the Mayan culture, often spoke about within the Bhavarata, which is the Sanskrit Indian text or indo kush text, in which that speaks about flying objects, as well as also on the wars of ancient Kemet, um, in particular in Abydos, um, Temple City One. So these things have been seen, and the crazy thing about it is that not only have they been seen or read about, but Adolf Hitler and them designed it. So it was right. in a book called 1944 right. to 1994, Man-Made UFOs. There's a book written by... Uh, there's another book written by Man Made UFOs. It's written by David Childress. But you can get these particular books and they break down Man Made UFOs. So these are the ones in which they are oftentimes metallic and they are not light vehicles. What well, we're talking about identify flying objects or light vehicles, which are known as macabres, light orbs, or etc. You know? Uh, you know, these are some of the things in which that oftentimes has been spoken about. Um, of course, for those who are real Bible students, then of course you can know that Enoch walked with God and that was it. Walked with God and all of a sudden, you know, at the age of 360, he was not. Longer, I guess you would say, seen on the earthly realm. But he walked mm-hmm. with God and was obviously taken by God. And then, of course, we have another um, episode that, because we know that Enoch becomes Metatron, one of the um, archangels mentioned within the Jewish folklore of the um, angels. If you get a book right. called The Dictionary right. of Angels, you know, by um, David um, Gostow, uh, you will see in there. Um, that Enoch became Metatron. Now, of course, we have another story of Elijah, 
you know, who was taken up on a flaming chariot in which that the word flaming chariot within Hebrew is Merkava or Merkava, you know, in which that not only means light vehicle, um, the word mer means light or kind of feel of light. The word ba, of course, means soul. The word ka means spirit. So actually, it's not a Hebrew word. It actually is a, um ancient Kemetic or Tamaranian or Egyptian, whatever term that you want to use, um, word, mm-hmm. in which that um, symbolizes this physical body being able to be transformed into a ship. And it's not the physical body itself, it's actually the auric fill. The auric fill, what it does, flattens out into a diameter of about maybe 55 feet, in which that um, is round in diameter, 55 feet. And when two people or a couple join together, they actually can take with them 144,000 people. Now, this information you can get from nothing in this book is true, everything is exactly as it is, uh, which is written by... Um, Valo Mel Chesedek, um, Bob uh, Fessel is the one who was one of the students of Javala Mel Chesedek. He took a lot of the information from Javala Mel Chesedek and co-hosted it into that particular book. And you can get, um, you know, that one. I think he did another one, um, basically goes something similar to that, another title, in which that speaks about these particular things. Javala Mel Chesedek um, broke down um, the 18 breath, the 24 breath, the 28 breath techniques in which that helps with um, enlightening the chakra system or the seven seals, opening them up, cleansing them, as well as also causing them to expand, um, you know, um, and flatten out your auric fill in order to actually, you, actually when you're inside at the 17th breath of the 18 breath technique, you can actually feel a fill around your body. I've done these techniques. That's why I can speak about it. And, you know, you can actually feel like a humming or motor or engine type of um, energy or noise around you. Now, this is, this is, this is some fantastic um, shit, you know. Wow, it, it is. Wow. You know, I mean, right. So, so, I mean, these techniques actually work. And I advise um, people to actually start you know, getting into these meditations, and because this is not, you know, a gimmick. These are, these things actually happen. You actually are more than just your physical body. Exactly. For those that don't understand metaphysics, then that's the reason why you think just physically. You think that you are just dealing with your physical. You think you're just tangible. You think that that's all you are. You know what I'm saying? As we said before, um, Jeffrey Osborne, you know, or... Um, I can't remember the name of the group who, who sang the song. I'm only human, a flesh and blood, I mean. This is the, you know, these are the people who really um, can't cross metaphysics, and so therefore they're left out thinking that they only have earthly existence, and therefore, you know, oftentimes they become earthbound, um, you know, when the, um, the death thing takes place with them, you know. Uh, we also know that there is coming a time, which is upon us right now, as a matter of fact, being that we've entered to the age of Aquarius, or what is known as the age of Heru, which is the age of truth, the age of knowing, um, in which that symbolizes us going into a new 25,000-year renewal of history. Hmm. We've just finished a 25,000-year renewal of history. As we just came out from another 2,160-year rotation from out of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, in which that um, Aquarius symbolizes Heru. So we are now in the age of Heru, or Haru. Now, for those who don't know, the word Heru means light. So we're actually in the age of light now. And the light is actually the golden age. So we're actually in the age of the golden light. It's right. the word Nebiru, right. or Nebiru. Nebiru means the golden light. The word Neb means golden. The word Heru means light. So the age of the golden light, we're in the age of Nibiru. So we thinking that is just a planet in which that is coming, in which that is crossing, when actually we ourselves have crossed from out of the age of darkness into the age of light, from out of the age of the Kali Yuga age into the age of the Sati Yuga age. That is actually what is going on. And many 
have failed to realize this, you know, as you know, they do the research, you know, and there's no coincidence that there is another zodiac sign in which that has come to place, another constellation, another constellation in which that has come into place, known as Ophitius. Ophitius, um, actually is Imhotep. All right, each particular sign, a zodiac sign, um, has an ancient has um, an ancient Egyptian or Kemetic or Tamarian connection. All right. For example, Aries, being that is the ram, um, we know that within ancient Kemetic teachings that the ram is Amen. Amen symbol is a ram. So we know that Aries symbolizes Amen. All right. Uh, Amen Ra, whose symbol is a ram. All right. Taurus is Apis. Which is a form of a saw. Athis is the ball. All right. Um, then we have Gemini, which is actually originally was male and female, so actually was all saw and all set. Of course, in the earlier form was Neb and Gab. Mm-hmm. All right. Or Newt, excuse me, Newt and Gab. All right. And so uh, that becomes the original symbol of male and female or masculine and feminine. Properties, of course. Later on, it becomes our saw um, and set, or uh, and of course our saw incarnation. Later incarnation was Heru, so Heru and Set, um, which actually symbolizes the two brothers. Um, in the sense being that Heru was the incarnation of our saw, who was the brother of Set. Heru actually was the son, but they still refer to as the two brothers, in which that becomes the two male figures within the Greek pantheon of the Zodiac. That's where that comes from. Because of their fantastic battle of uh, saw um, being killed by his brother Set, the resurrection was Heru. Um, Heru continues the battle and destroys the genitalia of Set. Right. And Set right. plucks out the eye of Heru, oh. in which that's how he has to restore. That eye, of course, symbolizes the third eye. So hence, um, you have this white group or pale group, AB, um, Albion group, called the third eye blind. That's what they actually was symbolic to, was that um, his all-seeing eye was no longer all eye seeing. So he was not able to um, do a 360-degree rotation of knowing everything, past, present, or future. Um, mm. You know, so that's what that was all symbolic to. All right? And then, of course, we have um, cancer, in which that was Capra, which is the dung beetle, in which that later became um, the crab for cancer. But originally it was the dung beetle. And the dung beetle will move a ball of dirt um, into a ball as if it's pushing the sun across the sky. So hence, Kepara becomes the power of Heru. Um, Kepara becomes, um, in another form, Shechem, all right, which is the power of Ra. Right? That's why he's called Kepara. Hmm. Now, um, in that regard, and that was symbolic to the dung beetle. Um, and then, of course, we have Leo, which the lion um, the headed one was called Atum uh, within ancient Kemetic teachings. Um, his consort was um, Sekmat, the lioness. Her gentler form was Baset, the cat. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, we know that symbol symbolizes that. And then, of course, we have um, Libra. Uh, Virgo, excuse me, Virgo, in which that Virgo is the virgin, in which that, of course, is our set. The symbol of our set is that of the virgin. As you see on the scenes of the Temple of Het Heru, you see the scene played out of our set being, um, she she is she comes, um, or she's in the scene with Tahuti. Tahuti comes to her and tells her that she's about to receive a son, this is the same story within Matthew's book in which that uh, speaks about Gabriel, the angel, the archangel, comes to 
Mary and tells her that she's about to receive a son or become um, bestowed with the son of God in her womb. And yet, hmm. of course, she states that she knows no man. And basically the same scene is um, shown on the walls of, of the Temple of Pet Heaven in which that she bears witness to that fact. And, of course, she could not have been touched by no man because her husband, or saw, was dead. This is why later on in the nativity scene, you see um, Tahuti form a clay phallus or penis in which that she transformed herself into a bird, the ba, which is symbolic to the soul, and she lights herself over top of the phallus and flap her wings very fast and hard until her saw um, resurrects or ejaculates and from that union comes forth Heru, the immaculate, um, the um, the um, the, imma- um, the immaculate conception, or the immaculate one. Mm-hmm. All right. Hence the same story later on as we see of Jesus, and of course, December twenty fifth is when they say that this takes place because Heru symbolizes the sun in the sky, in the outer aspect, in the inner aspect symbolizes the soul in each and every one of us. Um, the soul is embedded inside of the pineal gland on which that waits for the resurrection, waits for the awakening process to take place by all set, which is the Kutalini. And as she comes up through the seven caves or the seven caverns or the seven seals or the you know, um, the last seal, which is the cave of Brahma, which is the cave of Osar, as it is also referred to as to awaken our saw, which becomes his rule. So our saw symbolizes the sleeping soul, all right? And his rule symbolizes the awakened soul, the resurrected one, all right? So mm-hmm. hence, Jesus becomes um, resurrected from out of the sepulchre, from out of the, um, you know, three days and three nights, symbolic to the Kundalini being wrapped three and a half times, call you at the base of the spine you know, half asleep, and she is resurrected through certain postures and positions and mutras or powers of words, you know, sound, healing, you know, or science of breath, techniques, visualization, and she manifests you know, and is awakened, and then she awakens her consort or saw, and from the divine marriage in heaven, or that, that divine union comes forth her rule. The divine one, once again. That is the awakened soul. That is your soul, your soul law, um, the soul of Ra uh, within you. And so, of course, the outer form of the son of Ra or the soul of Ra is the sun itself. All right? Um, the hidden one, which is the hidden sun, which is Amen, which is also symbolic to the fact that I can't see the soul, but I know that the soul is emanating through you because you are living, walking, talking, breathing. Entity, sentient being, all right, with the very facets of your multi dimensional selves, as we would say. And of course, we can see the outer sun, in which that, or we think we can, <laughs> all right, um, which all of it is an illusion. And the only thing which actually is real is the soul with the things, and which that gives the perception of life on this plane, as well as also life in this universe. And actually is what formed life in this universe, all right? For those who know the story of um, Adol Abra, you know, and, of course, Mother, so- uh, Mother Sophia, all right? But that's another story. The sun outside of us symbolizes that aspect, too, you know what I'm saying? And, therefore, um, we can see, you know, from those various aspects that that light from the sun um is the same light, you know, which that also shines and is emitted from us because as related beings, we take in that solar aphatic energy, cosmic energy, stellar energy, and we transform it into a life substance, which gives us longevity. If we absorb that energy into our dantian, and saw it there, and our lower dantian, if it's at the mid dantian, then it establishes love. If it's at the upper Dantian, which is called the upper room within Christianity, same upper room spoken of in the book of Acts, 
for those who are, you know, uh, foot stomping Christians, um, then you know what I'm talking about. And, of course, at that upper room level, um, when you store energy there, or prana or chi or key energy, known as cosmic stellar energy, etc., um, universal life force energy, then you um, activate your intellect, your intelligence, or what is known as your IQ level. It increases, enhances from the more storage of that prana. So um, you can actually heighten and change your IQ level by the practice of Qigong, the practice of Tai Chi, the practice of pranic healing, the practice of Reiki, and mm-hmm. all energy modality system because the more light you are able to process, the more complex your biology is. All right? This is what people start to realize, and this is the science of magic, is utilizing your mind in order to make it so. Your mind is the attractive quality of you. It is able to attract what you want. All right? Intensity, frequency, equals the law of attraction, plus even more so ritual. All right? This is also another thing from which that makes me fails to realize when it comes to the art of um, attraction, the law of attraction, is that you can actually do rituals in which that helps um, bring these things. That's why you have to have an altar set up in which that the altar had to have the four elements of air, water, and fire. I go further with three more elements in which that symbolizes um, sound, light, and, of course, thought. All right? And, of course, these seven elements correlate to the way in which that you um, utilize this altar. All right? So, for example, when you set up an altar, you have earth, so that means you need she shells, uh, coins, whether it's pennies, uh, especially real copper, um, gold coins, silver coins, etc. In order to help with the electromagnetic conductivity. And then, of course, you need water, a glass of water, in which that helps with the communication between um, the physical and the astral plane, um, then, which is communication with the ancestors, is the conduits. As well as also, we know that based on um, Imaru Emoto's um, experiments, the Japanese doctor experiments, in which that Africans have been saying since the beginning of time, eons, that this spirit in water, this spirit in water, um, we find out now that based on Japanese um test that these scientists states that if you speak beautiful things into a glass of water, freeze it, look at it under the microscope, you have six point star configuration, snowflakes, beautiful forms. However you say nasty things to a glass of water, freeze it, look at it under the microscope, it looks discombobulated. Have no wow. form whatsoever. So therefore, um water on an altar acts as a conduit. So if you say beautiful things, you speak it to the ancestors then, of course, it's going to convey that message because that's what they found out, that there's 400, um, over 400, in, uh, 440,000 channels of memory in water. Once again, there's over 440,000 channels of memory in water. Okay? So uh, we know that water memorizes things. So, of course, if you're talking to your ancestors, there's molecules in which that's taking shape of your ancestors. Pay attention to what I just said. Most of y'all mm-hmm. miss that shape. Now, <laughs> let's go to fire, of course. Fire, of course, is the lighting of incense. In particular, the incense that you want to use is incense in which that helps get rid of negative spirits from around your altar and from out of your house. So sage is number one. Sandalwood, um, as well as also uh, frankincense. And myrrh. This is why frankincense and myrrh was brought to Jesus because it to rid negative energy or spirits from around him as a babe. Of course, it's an allegorical story, but this is what the three wise men brought to him: gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Remember that. 
All right, gold helps with the conductivity, as we just finished saying, which is part of earth. Frankincense and myrrh are herbs in which that acts as incense, in which that um, can be burnt as incense, in which that get rid of negative spirits. All right. Now, fire is also symbolic to the lighting of the candle. And you can have a candle in which that symbolizes each chakra. So you can have a seven-day candle of the seven colors of a seven-day candle in which that burns in unison from violet down to red. In which that symbolizes tapping to all of the chakra levels of core royalty bins. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Hmm. All right? Now... Or you can have one of the colors of each one of the ones that I just finished saying based on the intensity level, based on the deficiency of your chakra system. Because once you touch a candle, you actually leave, or anything actually, you leave an auric residue. And so as the candle burn, actually can burn from the last wood that you have left upon it or impend upon it. All right? This is why um, this is called candle magic. Now, um, as well as also air. Air symbolizes the breath in which that you speak. So the words in which that you say has power. All right. We know specifically that science has now concluded that DNA can actually be changed or amalgamated, um, um, you know, by frequency, by tones, hmm. by sound, by words. Right. This is the power of prayer. This is the power of positive affirmation. This is the power of positive decrees. Wow. All right? Wow. So by doing this, you have an alt now based on the four elements. Now, let's get into the other ones. You come out sound, which is all part of the air aspect in that sense, as well as also light, in which that um, the higher form of fire is light. So the light actually means that you're channeling not your life force energy to the ancestors, but the universal life force energy. The energy in which that you absorb, what is called prana chi energy, can be utilized to strengthen the ancestors. In other words, you do not need a blood sacrifice. Because the huh. same thing in which that form those animals in which that the Africans are using in the blood rituals or sacrificing is actually the same universal life force in which that formed your physical body into existence and formed everything in which you can see, touch, taste, and smell in physical reality. So, mm-hmm. therefore, there's no need of using something physical, all right? That's low magic. You tell my high magic. High magic means that you can actually tap right into the universal life force energy, channel that energy through yourself in order to help fuel the ancestors on the other side, in which that gives them um, positive energy, help them be able to do what they need to do on your behalf. All right? Some um, deities, Orishas, um, Igun, or et cetera, do need and do want blood sacrifices. But you do not want those type of beings around your altar. All right? Now, I can tell you that for a fact because uh, when things get real hectic, um, sometimes you might need those beings, all right? You might need um, the seven African powers of those reaches, and they might want an animal sacrifice. And if you have animals, and if you don't want to sacrifice them, they'll take them. Huh. This has been shown over and over again. All right? So whether you have a dog, a cat, or whatever, you know, um, and you don't do, um, you know, and you don't, you know, bleed into the um, the pots, you know what I'm saying, by killing the chicken or rooster or whatever the case may be, or, or you, um, doing a goat or lamb or whatever the case is, and you don't bleed into these um, particular pots in order to fuel them, you know, they will still take a life. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, especially if you want something major in exchange. All right? Because remember, in order to receive a gift, you must give gifts. All right? This is for those who practice low magic. I'm just explaining to you the science of it. All right? Now, not saying that it's bad to have low magic. Sometimes it's necessary in order to use 
um, um, those particular beings in order to help stop certain things from manifesting, to jam the frequency of a timeline in which that you might have privilege in order to see, in which that you see something negative to happen, but yet you need something to jam it, stop it, you know, change it from occurring. And in those frequencies, you need those beings. I mean, I just had to be, you know, sincere and real about it. This is, this is where you have to learn the science behind gray magic. Because gray magic has to refer to it as, you know, and learn how to um, choose wisely, you know, what you actually are working towards. Mm-hmm. You know, all right. This is for those who don't have. Understanding, overstanding, understanding of these particular rituals. Now, let me continue on with the um, that comes that off at um, Virgo. Let's go to Libra. Libra, according to Mayat, weighs the, um, the scales, the balance of the scales, everything based on Mayat is balanced. Hence, the scales, which that's the simple. All right? Um, of course, then we have Scorpio, in which that is a scorpion, but um, in ancient Kemetic teachings, it is called Saket. All right? Saket, um, symbol, is a scorpion. All right? This is where the sign scorpion comes from. Saket um, is the scorpion king. That actually was the name, the ancient Egyptian name. All right? It's funny how... They call um, in the movie Imhotep, and they call all these other ancient Egyptian names. But then, when it comes to him, he's the Scorpion King. They don't tell you um, what the Scorpion King name is, but it's called Saket, all right? And that's the Scorpion. Um, of course, then you have uh, Imhotep, which comes between Scorpio and and that is called Fishius. But in ancient comedic terms, now Fishius within Greek term means the serpent wrestler. Or the serpent holder, but the real name is Imhotep. Imhotep was the designer, um, you know, the first modern, you know, historic um, um, metaphysician, physician, I should say, as well as also um, teacher, father of medicine uh, from the dynasty under Zosia. All right, of course, you remember hearing about the word Zosia. Uh, within the movie uh, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters, um, the demon in which that was controlling everything was called Zoza. All right, I think it was in part two, but you all go go back and check that out, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So all our, um, you know, all of our, you know, Egyptian deities become demonified, you know, in the movie outside because. Internally, in the inner workings or the inner mysteries, they actually are knowledge and worshiping those particular deities. This is why you see, for those who become Masons or Rosicrucians um, or part of the shrine, um, they deal with the Egyptian deities. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Egypt is still, um, you know, even though they use biblical, you know, sayings and quotes and things like that, but. Um, They'll tell you that um, masonry and the in the Rosicrucian um, that it goes back to that Moses and goes back to Akhenaten or Akhenaten. Mm-hmm. Hence, once again, is Egyptian um, pharaohs, you know, exactly. or become Egyptian right. deities. So they'll tell you this. So here they are acknowledging Egyptian deities, but yet at the same time giving you the auto um, teachings that. Demonic or evil, trying to persuade you not to study ancient Egyptology or Kemetology, and this is done purposely to protect the um, inner teachings and find out what these real, um, the real meaning behind these symbols actually are. All right, right. some Kemetologists or Egyptologists don't know the meanings themselves and they're studying this. For 10, 20, 30, 40 years. No, they don't. No, they don't. They can't tell you what we're telling you tonight, you know, and this is a shame. <laughs> you know, so 
And of course, um, the Theseus now come in. Now we have a calendar in which that is based on 28 days instead of 30 and 31 days. So actually, there's 13 months, and the 13 months are broken down to 28 days now. Because Officius coming in in between Scorpio and Sagittarius. All right. Um, now we have Sagittarius, in which that um, is based on Shu. All right. The ancient Kemetic deity for Sagittarius is Shu. All right. Then we have Capricorn, in which that is the go to Mendez. Mendez. All right. Then, of course, we have Aquarius, which is Heru. And then Pisces, which is Sebek. All right, so this is the way in which that the ancient Egyptians or Kemetics or Tamaranians broke down their zodiac. And you can see this on the temple walls of, of um, at Heru, at the Temple of Dendera. Up at, of, um, at um, in Dendera, you'll see the zodiac. So we know it's not a Greek thing. Um, historians came out recently and told you that the Greek thing was made up. They made it up. So everything Greek actually was once again Minoan, which is ancient Egyptian. All right, the word Minoan means men. They were the followers of men, and they're the ones that are known as the Cretans, in which they actually are the original Greeks. And if you read Sex and Race by J. Rogers, Volume One in particular as well as also what they never told you in history class by Endokimic Kush, as well as also the missing pages of history by Endokimic Kush, you will see in all three of those particular books that the Cretans or the Minoans are the original so-called Greeks. And they were Egyptians. Africans. All right, so, um, therefore, you know, don't get this twisted. The Greek thing was made up. There is no Greek history. There's only African no. history. That's right. That's right. All right. So, um, this is just some of the mysteries. Actually, there was Albion's who was trying to tie themselves into history, and so therefore they created history um, from the Greek culture in order to tie themselves into a culture that dated back to 3,000 um, years ago. Mm. When knowing um, very well that it was um, just at that time when they were still up in the Caucasus Mountains, according exactly. to legend and according to um, historical information. Mm-hmm. You know, were, so. Uh, mm hmm Yeah, they were, uh, like I said, you could say 3,000 years ago, knowing perfectly well, it goes way, way beyond that. Right. You know, and uh, uh, <clears throat> 3,000 years is about far as they can go. Right. They took what we right. That's, that's and, right, and and um, you know, that's the reason why they tied themselves into the Greek culture, you know, um, and ended up taking over, you know, the so-called Greek culture or what is called the Minoan or the Cretan culture, you mm -hmm. know, and um, like I said, you know, all of this is seen from all of the figures, figurines all of the um, statues and, you know, all of the structures under the Caspian, not Caspian, but under the um, Mediterranean, and well, also under the Caspian Sea, too, but mostly under the um, Mediterranean Sea, uh -huh. you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you got to have a lot of our uh, Asiatic brothers and sisters that took on even their uh, Greek and fraternity and sororities, you know. Right, 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 and and that's that's also another sad part, because not only do they not what they need to do is tell them that you know the Greeks are, you know, originally um, Africans, but they don't tell them that they let them assume that, or they just let them believe that um, the culture was you know was um you know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of that, yeah, I mean yeah. that's what that's what we have now. Exactly, you know, you know the belief system in Europeans, you know, and that's what's going on, you know. Whether it's the symbol of Caesar Boyer, um, you know, the Jesus figure, or you know, or pictures or whatever the case is, or um, us thinking, you know, conceptually and thinking mentally that you know they are 
you know, greater than we, and we have an inferiority complex, and they um, have a superiority complex, but when actually they're actually the ones inferior, and we are the ones in which that really don't care about um, certain things because some things, in a sense, are just too mundane in order to even think about or to um, exactly. have to work on. You know, like, for example, like, um, you know, not too many so-called blacks, you know, specifically would be interested in the cloning process. You know, um, you know, if you have a soul and you know that you are immortal, everlasting, eternal, forever, you know, what, what the hell is this about, you know, cloning? <laughs> you know, or artificial insemination or, exactly. uh, you know, any of these particular methods, you know, which that they have developed, cryogenics, you know. Um, in other words, we don't care about those types of things because um, we come from a culture in which that innately we've been taught to know certain things, you know, even if it's not told to us, it's embedded inside of our DNA. And the ancestor speaks, you know, um, when needs to. Mm-hmm. You know, so yes, um, you know, these are just some of the things. Um, I'm looking at um in the chat room here. Brother said they got cut off last night when Azariah was um talking about the Wizard of Oz and the wand being the phallus, and that yes, is true. That, the uh, wand is the other phallus. Night. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. Um, I was gonna try to watch it last night after um we got cut off. Um, everyone got cut off around twelve ten. Um, for y'all who was in the chat room listening to um, me, my wife, Azariah, and his mate, um, um, my Jade, and um, on the um, Twins um, show last night, the Red and Blue Pill. And for those who oh. didn't get a chance to, um, we all got cut off at 1210. Around 1210, yeah. we got cut off. Everybody got dropped. Okay? Everybody yeah. got dropped. Didn't want nobody getting that science out of Right, right. Well, I mean, and as a writer, was just getting ready to go in, you know, um, into the information, you know. He sure was. And um, he got cut off, you know. Wow. Um, matter of fact, Block Talk came in and took him out. You have been listening to Block Talk Radio. Thank you. And just <laughs> everybody. And yeah, that's what they do, yeah. And that's, that's what exactly they do. Exactly how they do us. Yeah, yeah. And um, the brothers thought they was going in, you know, brothers thought they was going to, you know, go in, you know, for at least, you know, probably another half an hour or at least another 20 minutes or so, whatever the case is. But mm -mm, we got cut off. So, wow, you know, yeah. Does that come on every Tuesday? Um, Yeah, on the um twin show. Yeah, the um, red and blue pill, the twillers, um, the, um, the twin pillars. Yeah, they come on every Tuesday. Um, I think between nine and twelve. Some most of the time they go between nine and eleven. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, and we was on there last night dropping some science about the cruise in which that we went on, and mm -hmm. um, they got into the topic of the Wizard of Oz, and Azariah was breaking down what the wand actually meant, and the wand actually symbolizes the phallus, um, and in an aspect that you know. For the sex functions to even exist, there's chemical responses in the brain. So actually, it symbolizes the mind itself. The phallus is nothing more than the extension of the mind. The physical mm -hmm. extension of the mind is the phallus, because all okay. of the memories is like a um, it's just like a um, a thumb drive, a flash drive, mm -hmm. as it is stuck into the computer. Um, it can um, it ha it can store data. Well, that's what the phallus symbol is. The phallus, the testicles, mm. or the penis and the testicles actually is the storage place of memories, of your ancestral <clears throat> memories, of your mm. concentration um, of memories of the ancestors. And all of that is stored at the testicles in which they have to be ejaculated through the phallus symbol or penis, which is just like that of the flash drive or, you know, so hence... Um, that is the physical representation of the mind is the phallus or the penis, as well as also within the woman is the um, G-spot area or the clitoral um, area. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, so um, extends into the, of course, within the woman, the uterus with the eggs, and of course, the man within the testicles with the sperm, as well as also to the prostate gland. All right, the prostate gland itself is the trigger, in which that helps with the um, ejaculation. Um, you know, that is what shoot forth this um, a strong prostate gland is what helps with the um, ejaculatory system or ejaculatory um, essence to be shot forth from the phallus, in which that actually supposed to be shot forth at least three feet. So this memory can be carried, and this memory um, becomes combined with the memory of the egg within the woman inside of the vaginal, um, hence through the cervix, hence into the uterus or um, the egg from the uterus in which that it goes into mitosis or what's called becomes blastopause after eight and which that begins um, cellular division in which that these memories becomes um, unified in which that forms the physical body into existence. Wow. All right. So memories is what forms the physical body into existence, sure. The physical representation of that is the sperm and the eggs. Okay. So does that, that so, deal with a lot of the scarecrow? Well, the scarecrow, of course, we know the scarecrow symbolizes didn't have a brain. So therefore, the scarecrow um, didn't have that essence about itself. Right. Um, the scarecrow was looking for a brain. The tin man was looking for a um, right. heart. In which that both of them symbolizes artificial persons. Something in which that did not actually exist um, humanly. That's why I did, uh, when they were running through the poppy fields, when the witch... Right, well, the right, the poppy, right, it was running, right, it was running through the poppy fields, and of course, they, um, they were unaffected by the poppy fields. Um, the snow symbolizes cocaine when it was coming down. The poppy mm-hmm. field symbolizes of um, morphine, in which that puts the person to sleep. So it's a painkiller to push you to sleep, so it numbs you. Um, well, the artificial persons, which is the straw man and, of course, the tin man, were unaffected by that, you know. So, of course, um, in that aspect, they symbolize something artificial, artificial entities, corporations, um, hence, i.e., mm-hmm. symbolic to, like, your name spot in all caps. And wow. when you identify with that, then that's actually what you are, too, looking for a brain and looking for a heart, Okay. <laughs> Man, that's something. Yeah, I mean, all of this is put. Um, Frank Brown was very, um, he was a Rosicrucian, so he put all that information into the movies, and he showed you what happened after the nineteen thirty um, three crash and the House Joint Res. Um, you know, all the way from the nineteen twenty nine to the nineteen thirty three crash, those four years in particular of the Great Depression, and he showed you throughout that movie, which was written in nineteen thirty eight. The movie actually was, I think the book came out around that time. The movie came out around 1939, around that time period. Right. And he shows you um, what took place, how we would switch from um, black and white world into a world of glitter and gold. And, of course, his grandma always say everything that glitters ain't gold. Hmm. You know, so um, as you see, she was wished off. Dorothy was wished off into a world of glitter and gold. First thing that she was told by the good witch Glinda, hence um, the glitter, because that's what was on the end of her um, of her wine, you was, know, was yeah. to get on the yellow brick road, which is, you know, which is symbolic to gold. Mm. You know, so um, all of that is, you know, um, within that movie. You know, of course, the Emerald City is the Federal Reserve Bank, in which they became centralized by J.P. Morgan and others. You know, the Warburgs and so forth and so on. You know, so, I mean, the whole thing is based on that and the system in which that we have turned and have actually gone into. And and you're talking about some sorcery. And I don't even like using the word sorcery because actually we are actually are the sorcerers because we can tap into the source. They don't mm-hmm. tap into the source. They use artificial means, you know what I'm saying, to replicate the source. All right? They can't tap into the actual source. They use replicated means, you know, in other words, through their devices. They use deception. They use trickery, wordplay, technology. You know, these are the, 
you know, sacrifices to um, um, human sacrifices, blood rituals and things like that. They use these types of things in order to tap into the, you know, just to get a, um, a imitation of the source. They have to do that. We don't. We can tap directly into the source. We don't need a medium. Right. We can tap so into kind of chi or key energy. Mm-hmm. You know, we ourselves are the are the medium. We don't need we are, a, another medium. We ourselves are the medium. So that shows we are really in tune with the universe. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, so, um, yeah, so definitely, you know, um, of course, I'm using menstrual blood, you know, is low magic. You know what I'm saying? Um, but once again, magic, um, some of these things can be used. I'm not I'm not um telling you not to use them. I'm telling you what you're doing to be aware and to understand, have an overstanding, understanding of what you are doing and participating in. Exactly. Let, um let, let let me explain this a little bit further for everybody can have a better conception and perception. Cool. Um, these entities, most of these entities have never lived in the human flesh, right? So they never lived as human beings. So they can't know your plight as a human being. Mm -hmm. Your ancestors, your mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, aunts, uncles, all those who have passed on, they have lived in human bodies. They know your plight. So they can identify and sympathize and empathize with you. These other beings, which has never been in flesh, cannot. Exactly. Okay? Hmm. And this is where some people say that these are demonic beings. Because they cannot sympathize and empathize with you as being a human being. Because the only thing they want is to be able to feed off of you in exchange for favors, you know, in order that, you know, they can do for you from the spiritual realm in which that can, you know, help you in this earthly um, existence. Now, like I said, um, sometimes it's necessary and they would take their sacrifice, um, as I say, um, from that which that is closest to you, such as um, a cat, a dog, or whatever the case is, um, some house pet, or whatever, you know, something in which that you um, have some type of sympathy or empathy for. And they will actually cause it to die in some type of capacity, um, whether it's getting hit by a car or whatever the case may be. And that would be the blood sacrifice, and then they can work on your behalf. You know what I'm saying? Understand that if you have a bloodline lineage and you have people within your bloodline who have actually called upon these beings, then that means that you have those same entities attached to you Hmm. within your bloodline. All right? right. You have these same entities attached to you in your bloodline because these are the beings in which that your forefathers and foremothers called upon too. And until you strengthen yourself well enough to the level of high magic, which means that um, you are able to tap into the source at any given moment and store chi or ki or prana energy, Mm -hmm. then you will need them to act on your behalf until you get to that level. But when you do so, there is still a... Give and take. That's all I'm saying. In other words, there's still a duality when you work with low magic. When you work with high magic, there is no duality. Everything is just as it is. That's definitely a high level. Right, this is higher level. level. Right, Mm -hmm. right, this is higher level. It is as it is. Mm -hmm. There is no duality. Right. Because the magic wand is your mind. You are able to now bring a thing into existence by thoughts. You no longer need a tool. You no longer need tarot cards. You no longer need um, um, Ouija boards. You no longer need altars. You no longer need thousand rods. You no longer need K2 
candles. You no longer need incense. You no longer need any of these things. All these things are for a left hemisphere thinking being. All right, then. So that explains why at one time a uh, woman could uh, uh, impregnate herself. Am I correct on well, that? Well, uh, at one time. At one time, she was able to impregnate herself because she, as we broke down um, on um, another radio show last night, um, that originally the woman was first. Um, when it says that the woman came from Adam, that is true. She did come from Adams. But the Adams in which that she came from was called the sixth atom or the sixth element on the periodical chart called carbon. The sixth okay. element on the periodical chart is carbon. And it says that Adam was made on the sixth day. That is symbolic to carbon being made um, as the sixth element on the periodical chart. Mm -hmm. And her physical body, being a melanated being, was composed of carbon, hence a black substance known as melanin, dark matter, black energy. And her physical body was formed and structured first from these atoms. All right? And she essentially was the perfect androgynous being. As she began to fall and um, digress and um, degenerate, she became hermaphrodite. From the hermaphrodite, which was a predominantly a woman, but she had both genitalia, but she was only able to use, after a while, the vagina. And the phallus began to shrink to later become the clitoris. And from that also came forth um, during that transition or right before that transition of the shrinking experience between the phallus, um, um, the penis, or et cetera. We would say that um, they develop into a homophodite in which that the phallus now was that which was, or the clitoris as we would think of it, um, was the major... Um, I guess you can say the major um, organ that was used or was able to be utilized. And the vagina began to um, close up. That's why the man has a sewn up section from his um, base of his um, penis down through his shoulder sack all the way uh -huh. to his anus area. It's like a sewn up area. Right, and that yeah. was the closing up that was the closing up of the vagina. And the clitoris became more elongated. All right, in that regard. So hence that's where the splitting between male and female took place at was between the homophodite and the homophodite stages. And as each one began to degenerate in their own accord is what formed the woman um and the male species. This is why right. even today you can take science and you will find out that um, there are hermaphrodites and hermaphrodites being born to this very day. Yeah, it, it, right. they are. Yeah. All right. Are. All right. So um, <clears throat> what happened is that the man began to, um, the woman um, had still double X chromosomes, so she was able to, um, still received the sort of fatic energy from the sun, and based on um, many teachings and readings, matter of fact, you can get a book called Secrets of Regeneration by Hilton Otima, in which that he breaks down that women at one time was able to become impregnated by the sun itself. The sun, <clears throat> sort of fatic rays from the sun will act as um, the phallus symbol, and within the womb will produce life. This is wow. why later on, from those in which that was produced from that immaculate conception, as that's where the so-called immaculate conception came from, what happened is that um, the children in which that was born from that, um, because the rays, check this out, the rays, the rays of the sun came down in a YX chromosome pattern, <laughs> which is the, which is the backwards or the reverse of the male, um, the physical male. Um, genetic or chromosome pattern, which is XY chromosome. So the sun rays of the sun is masculine, and they would impregnate the woman. And she did what is called sun salutation and open her vaginal area up. The sun rays would go in 
Um, of course, the sun rays come down um, from 93 million miles away, eight minutes and 20 seconds it take for the sun rays to reach and touch the mm-hmm. planet Earth. Well, the woman would open herself up and she would practice these yoga techniques and within the womb would become impregnated and the children born from this would be called sons. So that's how we get S-U-N to become S-O-N. Oh, okay. So that was the beginning stages of the hermaphrodite becoming homorphodite, which became later on the female and the male species in its degenerative stage. Wow. Okay. So that is um how um all of that took place. Wow, okay. So, you know, once again these are um part of the hidden teachings, the inner meanings, you know, and um you know, and we've been going in tonight. Let's see if there's any callers. All right, we got Eric Cole, 614. Eric Cole, 614 on the line. Peace. Peace. Oh, peace Greetings. time, everyone. Greetings. Peace, how you doing? Uh, Greetings. I'm good. I'm Andrea. I, um, you answered my question as far as um, the menstrual blood and the, even semen. If you, you're using that, all that is low magic, basically. Well, it can be part of high magic if you practice what's called tantra create yoga and you're not calling on a particular entity or deity because remember, like I said, the sperm and the um, blood itself actually is memory because it's water. Mm-hmm. It's called the waters of life. So it's actually memories, you know, it has the containment of the memories of the individuals who is using it as well as also the ancestral memories of seven generations on your mother's side and seven generations on your father's side. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, you answered my so, question pretty much. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's all. I, I, you know, I post that. So you, you pretty much um, answered it for me, and I thank you for it. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Chief. Thank, thank you, ma'am. All right. We got Erico 910. Erico 910, you're on the line. Yeah, what's up, brother? Peace. Peace. Yeah, uh, I'm not too uh, familiar on that hermaphrodite uh, theory, um, so I'm not going to touch on that. But um, as far as, like, the magic, um seems like uh, the new form of magic is science. Uh, I also know that uh, in Kemet, too, yeah. they had... Uh, they From metaphysics to them, quantum uh, how, Exactly. They were telling them how those, those deities die out. Like you know, because you're dealing with lower lower forms of energy, you know what I'm saying. Well, you're dealing and, um, with they even tell you that. Uh, Let me explain. You're dealing yeah, with I'm, thought forms, yeah. right? See what happens is that when you um, set up an altar and you are calling upon a name, what happens is that you're producing a thought form, and these thought forms, after a while, if they're not being refueled, they dissipate. So that's hence what they mean by die out. Yeah, but like, like you know, like, uh, like oz, like the ozone layer, it can deplete. The ozone layer can be depleted and go away. So, you know, as far as scientifically, that's an explanation that you know that I could you know deal with because I know they wasn't just dealing with just some um, something that wasn't scientific anyway that couldn't be uh, studied and measured because you know those uh, a lot of those schools you know uh, that's what that's all that scientists all that science was the gods were science because if you look at a uh, the metal netter they had, you know, they had to when they translate the, the names, those words, they right. have uh, they have so many gods because they seen the divine aspect of nature and everything. So once you tap right, the, but, the, you know, but, that, but that what, intelligence of that, go ahead. Right, but what gave them the ability in order to see the divine intelligence, the divine intelligence within everything? It was the mind. The mind makes everything real. So they understood that, and when you perform magic. You want it to be real. So you use the mind in order to form thought forms or to form a thought so that it can be utilized in order to make it real from the other side into this world so that the entity which you have just formed can work on your behalf. So, yes, they understood magic perfectly, and I'm not denying that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, but, like, today for now, like, you know, the best form of magic is to, you know, to study, you know, genes 
and, and, and you know, the intelligence of genes and how they express themselves and how they turn on and turn off. You got you got a gene or protein that is, you know, based on everything you do from, you know, the language that you speak. Different languages have, mm-hmm. uh, you know, certain mutations in them. Like, you know, you can't even, you know, different, well, I wouldn't say different languages have mutations. I would say different uh, different people, you know, based on their genetics. Mm-hmm. They have certain mutations where they can't even speak certain languages. And you can look at uh, from even the comedic, uh, some of the uh, uh writings that was left, they would talk about how, you know, the Greeks couldn't understand their language, they couldn't speak it right. When if you look at genetics and you look at the mutations that they carry, of course they couldn't speak it because they had a mutation in their I think that it's called the FOXP two gene that is responsible for our language. And you can have a mutation in that and you won't be able to speak certain certain things. You know, because the the uh, the hieroglyphs from what I, I studied, they were you had to first learn them without having sounds. And so nowadays, you know, we use English, you know, you A and then you say it in your head. And that's why math is so important because math, they deal with numbers, which is similar to logos, different expressions. So that's why you have these physicists understanding, okay, the Higgs particle by doing physics, by doing, you know, science. So that's like the best form of uh, magic for our, our people because if you look at our genetic expression, we have the greatest genetic expression than any other people on the planet. So if you learn your, no your genetic expression, you, you can see what you're capable of doing when certain things activate or when I certain agree. things are, are stopped. Mm. And so, you know, that's I what the, you know, the Neanderthal is doing now. He got 2% Neanderthal. He sent his mutation. Right. They did a study, 6,000 people, 4,000 4, European uh, Americans. Yeah, they probably mm-hmm. have more. That's just what they're telling us. We really don't know. We need to, mm-hmm. we need to know. We need to get some labs and see what the hell is going on. You know, then we'll right. be back on our M Hotel, you know, uh, you know, exactly. back on our square. So they, they did a study, 6,000 uh, people, 4,000 European Americans, 2,000 African Americans, and they said that they have 74% mutations in them that, that, that we don't even have. And they exactly. know that they're dying out because they're, they're physicists, uh, the one who fucked himself up. Uh, what's, what's the dude's name in the wheelchair? Stephen yeah, Hawkins. He Stephen fucked Hawkins. himself up to get in that wheelchair. Because they know that they gotta they gotta fuck themselves up to a certain degree to be able to understand certain dynamics of nature because they don't have the they got mutations that won't allow them to completely understand what the hell is going on. But he even said God right. exists, but we don't need him. So he's right. saying he's saying that uh, they need to get off the planet within the next thousand years. So now you got Russia. Yeah, we bought the spend fifty billion. They sending lizards and all type of insects and monkeys in the space to see how you know affects them, you know, so they are really trying to lead a planet because they know that they can't survive, they got this mutation that is going to be deleted but, you know, they're doing all this science the genes right. are trying to do magic to try to, you know, exactly. bring themselves back into the fold, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's kind of what I think that movie Oblivion was about if you want to touch on it because they you know, they had a black man that was the only one that didn't get his memory deleted who was able to stop it and So That's true yeah. Uh, you know, if y'all brothers want to build on that, you know, I, you know, I want to hear your take on that, Ali. Oh well, shoot. I mean, um, I ain't get a chance to finish seeing all of it as of yet, but um, um, going to a brief um breakdown of it, um, as far as the characters who was in it, that for uh, for everybody can know um uh, which one you're talking about. Well, I mean, not even just the movie, but I mean, just the concept in general, or even the movie, whichever right. direction you want to go in it. Right. You, all right. So you're talking about Morgan Freeman. You're talking about Tom Cruise. Right. And if you go back and look at Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise was a clone. And even Morgan Freeman said that there was thousands of him. And as we seen, as they was going through the pods, there was thousands of him inside of the pods and his name was Jack. If you notice the last three movies that Tom Cruise played in, his name was Jack. Huh. Jack Reacher. And he's a, Jack and he's a Scientologist. <laughs> wow. Bingo. Uh-huh. Right. All right. Now, of course, we know Jack means to spring forth because it has come from the science of Jack in the box. Wow. All right. So it's, it's no coincidence that for the last three movies or so that Tom Cruise played in, his name has been Jack. I'm going to write something you know? down, brother. And there's no coincidence that it was three, you know. 
and this here, Oblivion, being the third movie. In other words, Jack and Oblivion. And that goes back to what you just finished saying about them dying out. And in order to spring forth, as you've seen in the movie Oblivion, they had to have they had to go to another world. Okay. Exactly. So, and, and, and the course, movie is like deep you, because it it, mm-hmm. it it goes with the science because they just did. A, I watched on the Discovery Channel like uh, last month. They did a show talking what is the planet worth, and it was into like seven quadrillion quartillion dollars as far as based on the, the elements, the the resources. And so, when you, when you see the oblivion, how they try to you know terraform the planet into a battery so that they can leave and go right. to another place that they need to get to, you can see exactly. that where where we're really going. I mean, all these people like Alex Jones and these these conspiracy theories, they're talking all this stuff, but they're not putting it in the picture that it's about us. They're, you know, exactly. they're, they're going to have to they're going to have to survive. In order to survive, you know, they're going to have to turn the planet into a battery and go, or they're going to have to turn us back into who we was when, when they first came in contact with us. They got to become we got to become slaves domestically so they can feed off of that power. They didn't. They wasn't just doing that just to. That was a part of their survival. And I don't know which direction yeah, it, to go in, but go ahead. No, I was just going to say that. See, that goes back to the movie Matrix too, in which that um, you know, um, Morpheus held up a door so battery to Neo, and told him that um, and said, um, Neo, this is what we are to them, and basically showed him a door so battery, in which that that was all symbolic to them feeding off us once again, the machine world, which that that's what they represent that technology symbolizes them eating off, you know, of the human energy. You know what I'm saying? And then we got a cartoon um, for children, as it's supposed to be, you know, allegedly, um, called Monster Inc., in which that the monsters would scare the children. Um, they actually would come through the children's bedroom door, you know, the boogeyman thing, and then, of course, the child would see them and would scream, and then they would capture the scream and take the screens back, you know, of the humans back into their world to fuel their system. Wow. <laughs> so the whole thing is based on um, utilizing our energy. And this is what they do with the churches. This is what they do with all these fear tactics, you know, the false flag, um, Boston bombing, um, the false flag, um, 9-11, the false flag, um, Sandy Hook, all of these false flags. You know what I'm saying? It's all to get us riled up, get the adrenaline going, and get, um, you know, the um, fear, you know what I'm saying, um, moving right. so that they can uh, um, encapsulate it so they can fuel their system. Exactly. And then use mind control tactics and um, techniques in order for distraction while there's other things going on in the background at the same time. Like, for example, as the... Um, the force bombing in Boston was taking place. Um, Obama, Clinton, and Bush was being indicted on war crimes in the international <laughs> court. Huh. You know, so, you know, this this is the things in which that they do. So the thing is that um, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So they don't care about, um, you know, they don't care how slippy the shit looks. They're still going to do it. And as sloppy as all of these things been looking here lately, you know, you just got to say, damn. I mean, it's just like the, um, the, the, um, here it is, the Sandy Hook principal who supposedly died, um, in the Sandy Hook massacre all of a sudden is now, she, uh, she also becomes now a victim in the Boston bombing. How that shit happened? They resurrected her. That's crazy. <laughs> you Man. know, or the, uh, or the incident with the little, um, blonde hair, blue eyed girl who father got on TV talking about she was blind. And, okay, what the hell was she? He, he was blind, got to do with it, but he got on TV talking about she was blind. In other words, you know, blondes have more fun. You know, she was blind, she was innocent, she was white. And then all of a sudden, this same little girl shows up in the picture with Obama at the damn memorial. But yeah, she was supposed to have been a victim in the Sandy Hook incident. Wow. Oh, so, so what you think that what you think that means? Because to me, it seems like I, I, I don't know, man. But I think they might. I, I think it's a possibility that they could turn this around to where we're back into real like chattel slavery period. Because they're saying that 
They're saying that Africans have the greatest genetic expression. They are a mutation. Right. They're dying out. So obviously right. they need you to live. They need they need to, they need your energy to live. Period. I don't know how it's going to manifest, but well, all these situations well, like you're saying, they're still living. They, oh, we don't know. We don't know if these cities are real. These these towns are real. They're not telling us everything. They're not going to tell us everything about nothing. We don't know nothing. We can't sit here and say that anything that we know is for certain. With the aquarium, they right. here now. So uh, there's it's not. There's no going back to chattel slavery anymore. Uh, uh, we're pulling out of the uh, third and fourth dimensions into the fifth dimensions. So those right. of us that won't. Uh, 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 one would refuse to listen, study, meditate, uh, learn some of the higher sciences. Mm-hmm. What we've been talking about tonight will be left behind. Computer, I know that. Just like that. Well, it's real simple. The thing in which that is going to have to happen is that the only way that they're going to survive is the mixing with us. That's how they're going to have to do it, through gene expression, just like you said, brother. So they're going to have to survive through those in which that are willing in order to um, sexually get down with them. You know, they're going to need more. But I, but I um, mean, exactly. You, you know about recombinant West. DNA, though, right? You know about recombinant DNA. I think that they're trying to – recombinant DNA is artificial DNA. That, you know, they can right. put on the um, regular DNA strand. So I don't think them surviving is sexually mixing with us. I think there is – them, you know, understanding the whole code and where these, you know, mutations come on and where they come off and how to reverse it because they're doing, they're studying reverse entropy. Like all of this, right. this, this quantum, this quantum theory, all this quantum mechanics, that's the level of study that they're on to try to reverse their mutation, period. Right. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's, yeah, I'm have sex with African women to survive. I think it's, we're going to get this code and, and but you can see that's what they for our... understand. But you can see that one aspect of them is is banking on that because this is why exactly. they have all these commercials in which that is acting as mind control in order to um, just like my wife pointed out um, over the last few years here how the increase of black and you know so called black women and um, and white men. Or now exactly. um, being connected, you know, just like on the um, TV show, you know, the um, phenomenal um, C- um, TV show now is the scandals. And they are pushing, you know, this thing rather hard. And, of course, you know, they already pushed the um, brothers and the white women together, you know, saying for um, for some years now. You know what I'm saying? So in one aspect, one branch of them is banking on that. And, of course, you know, that's the best thing they can do right now. Of course, they want to um, refine it and, you know, um, master that. And so, of course, they are still studying, you know, cloning and different other facets Mm -hmm. of, you know, DNA combinations and, you know, um, doing the um, human genome project and so forth and so on, mapping DNA. So, yeah, they're still doing that also. But like you said, they're still trying to wedge themselves back in. Because they knew they was um, was taken out, you know, completely, and that it was only taken out for a time period of about a six thousand year cycle, based on you know the teaching of Elijah Muhammad, the Nation of Islam, um, as well as also the Nation of Gods and Earth, as well as also the Moral Science Temple of America. So, you know, based on those particular teachings, you know, that is what is taught. That's at least what was taught in the Adapt Chamber. So, we know that these things are taking place, and of course, you know, like brother. Um, L said, you know, Grand Sheik said, we just got to be aware of it. And, um, you know, and us, for those who are woke, you know what I'm saying, there is no more chattel. You know, um, we are moving into the fifth dimension where um, our exactly. minds, you know, our mentals um, have jumped already into the fifth dimension. Of course, um, that will also bring our bodies, you know what I'm saying, into the fifth dimension, which means that we will be dealing with energy. We no longer would just be dealing with length, width, and height, or death, which is the fourth dimension, which means it's just time and space, but we'd be dealing with the fifth dimension, which also is energy. So we're going to be dealing with these things, not saying that we're going to get rid of the physical body, but we will be able to utilize more energy. That's the whole science of the fifth dimension, uh, being able to utilize more energy. So for those who are able to, then um, we are able to store more energy, 
Um, we are more biologically complex. You know, um, I think it was Frank Barr who um, stated, Fred Barr, um, I believe his name is, um, in which that stated that a being who is the most complex are those in which that know how to use light, basically. You know, that's paraphrasing. So um, we have to learn how to use more light. And, of course, um, the Chinese, you know, have already, you know, kept that system alive for us and which that they learned, you know, over 2,000 years ago from Bodhidharma, who was the Indo-Kishite, and which that came, his people was the Tamil or the Pre-Davidians who came from out of Ethiopia, and which that kept that system alive, and which that dealt with the basics of Qigong, or known as the 18 Lohan um, um, Kung Fu or Qigong techniques, in which that the monks began to develop, and which that become now known as the Qigong and Tai Chi. And that's how you learn how to harness light. You know what I'm saying? 300,000 tons of stardust energy force to the planet Earth daily. In quantum physics, they have already realized that we are stardust beings, that our physical body is composed of stars. You know what I'm saying? That we are a star being. You know, so, I mean, you know, once we put all these little clues together, then we understand our real role and what we're supposed to be doing in order to um, stay on the path in which that, you know, that innately we're being told through our DNA, you know, and not to follow someone else's um, lineage. All right. Um, thank you, brother. Um, we have another caller here. We got area code eight zero four. Area code eight zero four. You're on the line. Hi. Good evening. Uh, my good name is. Good evening. My name is Hugh. I'm calling from Virginia. Absolutely good fascinating evening. show. And uh, I am a very simple person, and I have a heart to God connection, and that's what I'm telling people to do to get through right. these difficult times. And right. what I would like. To do because all the things that you're talking about, I can back up with documentation. A lot of the things that will really help people awaken, what I'd like to do is share my name in a couple of words, which will bring you to a website that has PDF files and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Please links do. in an interview I did. Please do. Yes, my name is uh, Hugh, H U G H. The last name is Charlson, T like Tom, R A U L S E N as in Nancy. After my name, just put two words Synchro, S Y N C H R O, and Mystic, M Y S T I C. And on that, uh, you know, there's PDF files with a front page Wall Street Journal article from 1983 that I was written up in where I exposed the former high-level federal government bureaucrat for fraud and indirectly that eventually led to the resignation of Jim Wright from Speaker of the House in shame. The article beautifully describes how special interests and lobbyists have totally corrupted Washington, and we can reverse all this, and that's what they're afraid of. That's why they're putting up the false flags to keep people from being distracted and coming into their own power. Uh, but right. <clears throat> what I told what I tell people, it's so simple and basic, is to get out of your head and into your heart. Align your heart with the Creator, whoever you feel it may be. Ask for divine guidance on a daily basis. The other big keys that people tend to miss are to always be in gratitude no matter what your circumstances. They may be difficult or horrible at times, but that may be because you have to learn some lessons and to take actions. Don't just talk about things, but take positive actions. Look for what your passion is and work toward that and keep asking for that divine guidance, and especially to help others, especially those who can't help themselves. And when you do that, you're actually blessing yourself. Right. No doubt about it. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yes, and you'll see some very powerful interactions that I've had. I've had some pretty bizarre experiences throughout my life. I was set up numerous times, and I think you really confirmed why I went through some of these things. It was probably because of agreements that my uh, ancestors may have 
had uh, with the dark side or whatever. So uh, right. either way, uh, whatever I can't handle, uh, again, I'm simple. I don't go into anything except God. I, I let go and I let God when I can't handle things. Always forgive and come to a place of unconditional love. That all works right. Well. Exactly, exactly. I love that. Yes, and I tell people to heighten their awareness and to really help them overall is to get out and to make as much as possible. That's God's classroom. It truly is. And creating everything around you, uh, looking at the beautiful flowers, the trees, the clouds, and listening to the birds that will lower your blood pressure. It will heighten your awareness. And I had a very interesting experience a number of months back. I'm a senior citizen. I walk around an independent apartment building for exercise. I multitask. I pray while I walk. And when I finish, I reward myself and sit on a bench and just enjoy nature. When I did that last summer, out of nowhere, a butterfly came and landed three feet in front of me. It was brown with orange and white markings on it, and it stayed for about 20 minutes, periodically opening and closing its wings. I was trying to figure out who's going to leave first, me or the butterfly. The butterfly did move another three feet and landed on top of a dandelion and opened its wings and left them open. Then I started getting a telepathic message that when life is hard or we hit a bump, we tend to go into a shell or close off, but if we do like the butterfly, just open up and let go and let go when we can't handle things, how beautiful life can be. When I got up to walk away, I noticed my Bermuda shorts were brown with orange and white markings, the same colors as the butterfly. The miracles are around us all the time. We just have to open up to them. No doubt. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Exactly. Every mind, every mind is a one I'm looking to mm-hmm. how women and indigenous peoples globally have some very powerful strategies. And two, the, the, again, the, what they're afraid of is that we all have that unlimited creativity. And when we truly harness it properly, we're a formidable force that they can't handle. And love is the right. most powerful energy. That's God. So that's they, they don't know how to handle that. And okay. uh, that's what I'm looking to bring truth and transparency to the forefront. My big mission and vision, as I see it, is to bring spirituality into global economics and combine it with unconditional love, making everything transparent, ethical, legal, moral, and forcing companies to be more responsible for their employees, their customers, the environment, and the community. And when people start waking up and realize election day is not certain days, but every day you buy a product, you're casting a vote for the manufacturer of that product. So if you're going to buy lead-based painted toys out of China through Walmart, your kids don't have a choice, but you do. You can choose to to buy American or buy something from another country of good quality that you know that the company is doing the right thing by the employees and the environment and the communities. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. I appreciate you coming on and sharing that with us. Um, that yes, reminds so me of when we went up to the yeah, It's mounds. really all about people helping people for our future. We can see that these governments are manipulative and deceptive behind the scenes. And I'm just starting with the – already we're getting into another political – I hate politics, but they're already starting to rev up for the November elections. This time around, and maybe your show can pick up on it, and also on that huge Wilson synchromistic, the – second half of it, my business partner, who's Mensa with three doctorates, one in psychology, one in religion, one in theology, discusses some of the things that we're doing. So I hope you'll be able to uh, check that out and maybe come to us and interact. But I'm looking, you know, it, it's since the beginning, it's been all control, conquer, and divide. But we don't have to repeat history anymore. The technologies that are in place that they're using to spy on us, we can reverse and look back at that. That's true. You know, we can take our power back, and what I'm t- putting out to politicians and to political parties is Wonderful. that I'm, yeah. I'm not endorsing any candidate, but I'm going to tell all the candidates for this upcoming election and from now on, we're going to put cameras in your faces, and you're going to have to, in order to win the election, 
be truthful, transparent, and interact with the constituents. If you, and it doesn't make mainstream media it doesn't matter anymore. People are moving away from that in droves, and they're coming right to the internet to group up. So you're not even going to see this happening, and then you're going to wonder why you didn't get elected because you're not truthful, transparent, and interacting with the constituents. If you do get elected, the cameras are still going to be there, and they'll be for your advantage to show that you're a man of your word when you get in there. You're going to have weekly webinars or monthly webinars at least, town hall meetings, where you can interact with the constituents, and the majority that are, have a consensus will tell you how to vote. You don't vote and tell us what you did anymore. You're going to do the work you were sent there for. And the ones that are in office now, the congressmen, senators, with all the Swiss bank accounts, they're going right out, and we're going to check out those Swiss bank accounts. Wow. Mm. Mm. All right, all yeah, right. you're going to find that Wall Street Journal article quite fascinating because uh, it describes uh, someone who came from me to this lobbyist, and this is a good example of what goes on that people are totally ignorant of. He was asking the lobbyist to help him uh, related to what he was looking for to get retractable boat cleats put on boats as a safety item. The lobbyist said, we'll just pass the law and make it mandatory from now on, all manufacturers have to have retractable boat cleats. That kind of stuff goes on every day in Washington. That's why they have all these pork and add-ons to bills and this and that, whatever. You take the simplest item and just picture this over the years, the automobile seat belt. How many millionaires were made on that one item since it became law? And then you start thinking about the pollution control devices and everything. And I'm all for safety, but that's industry. They can police themselves, and when they can't, then the government steps in. The problem is the government's dead with these guys. And it's not just big government. It's big business. It's mainstream media and the religions. Mm -hmm. All of them are in cahoots together. Exactly. Right. Right. No doubt about it. But but, uh, we can start reversing all that, and we don't have... I don't know. I think they're planning something probably for this summer, but I'm not so concerned either about what they're planning because, again, it's it, when we have enough people with that divine connection to raise the consciousness, they're, in my mind, they're already finished. I, I call them out on that. And I'll just interject this real quick, too, because I, I already consider myself uh, uh, back from the dead because I had a near death experience. I'm like Phoenix Rising. Mm-hmm. And they run from me in fear. And that's where the fear goes on now on the elites. And I say that God has harmonics, which are sound waves. And when the sound waves come, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, if you're in the right kind of heart to God alignment, you'll be perfectly fine. But if you're an elite, you could be sitting on your yacht on the, in the Mediterranean sipping a pina colada, and you may spontaneously combust or explode. The same thing if you're in one of these underground bunkers somewhere, because God's harmonics will go where God wants them to go. And uh, sure. you change your ways and live a little longer if you start doing the right thing by caring and sharing with people. And mm-hmm. somebody said to me, aren't you afraid of retribution? I said, retribution for what? I didn't do anything wrong. They did. If they have exactly. a hitman right. to me out, I'll eat the hitman's brains out from the spirit world. will be quite painful. I'll be a little more gentle on him than the guy who hired him. So that's the other thing. If, you know, transitioning into spirit, we came from spirit. A hundred years is like the blink of an eye in terms of eternity. What we have to do is get that heart to God connection going again because I believe we're fully responsible for every moment we spent here. And the, the bottom line in everything, again, is unconditional love. So let's find ways of showing. Let's stop the racial blowing, get into the communities, embrace our differences. And yes, hold on to those heritages. I'm working with some indigenous people now from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. There's a, a site, LakotaGrandmothers.org. They're just coming off a tour and they're going to go back out. And uh, through corruption uh, of their own people that they learned from the white man's ways, they've, uh, they're not even getting their most, most basic needs met. And these are taxpayer dollars. So my partner is also former law enforcement. And we're helping to root that corruption out there so that these people can get what they justly deserve and deserve. 
preserve the heritage that's been passed down thousands of years through word of mouth. We can't lose that kind of stuff. And it, it doesn't matter what ethnicity or background you have to keep those thousands of years old heritages and then find the best of that and bring it into the communities, each one exchanging to create the best future for mankind. That's the way I see it. No doubt about it. We're going to have to do that. We're going to have to de- exactly. take indigenous people and take um, take all that information on which that comes from the oral traditions and, you know, and all that information, I mean, is very valuable. You know, I mean, um, information on which that um, I know I read recently about um, one of the um, last um, of this Australian tribe, you know, um, in which that I think one of the last Tasmanians, you know, and how that information just died with her, you know, it was right. um, the information is no longer there, you know, because um, you know the, the people's history has now passed on, you know, the whole history, the whole culture, the whole traditions, and we can't that we can't keep allowing that to take place and happen um, in the so-called civilized. Um, society, of course, we know it's one of the most uncivilized societies. But you know, you know, when they allege that it's supposed to be civilized, then we have to act um, civilized and think about those types of things. Um, you know, and, and, and actually, you know, take hold of those cultures and traditions, and like you say, it betters the um, humanity. It betters us. Yes, and you know, you just hit on something perfect because you said uncivilized. Who put the term on the American Indians? The, the people coming from Europe said they're uncivilized. They had right. a beautiful society. They, they were very happy. They blended with nature beautifully. Mm-hmm. Right. And so now they, uh, they genocided them. And they're genociding the black race. The, the elites are genociding any, uh, anything that's uh, indigenous. So that's why... And and women too. I'm looking to empower women and the indigenous. Of them. Most of the indigenous cultures, women are the ones that are in charge anyway. They tell the chiefs what exactly. to do. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No doubt about wow. it. We definitely agree with you. We definitely agree with you. Um, give us well, those articles one more time for you people to me go and check and them out. out. Yeah, when you check me out, come back to me and my business partner because we also have strategies that we can give to the people i'm looking i am one person but these things all i need is a few women sitting by the computer to implement some of these things and it will bring more passive income into their household and it's it's already being picked up by uh, russia and, and indonesia and china and we have too many toys here and people are too apathetic in this country and it's if we don't get our act together uh, you know, <laughs> we're going to go down the tubes. Exactly, yeah. No doubt about it. But again, right about what people really have to get into their hearts is no matter what happens, understand who's truly in charge, and that's God. So get that heart-to-God connection and just ask for that divine guidance and, and love your neighbors yourself. Jesus said it right. He said, put God before everything and to love your neighbors yourself. If you can do that, you're hitting the home run. All right. No doubt about it. All right. Um, we have another caller here. Thank you. Um, and we definitely want to. Um, um, do you want? Do you have any contact um, information for people can get in contact uh, you with you? My you number. Can you can keep, keep that. Keep my number and call me anytime on that uh, uh, interview site. You Charleston Synchro Mystic, my business partner. I'll give you his uh, so you can tap into him. He's also got blog talk shows, and his website is attractingabetterlife.com, all one word, attractingabetterlife.com. And all you have to do is tell him you spoke with you, and he'll hook, hook up with him, and uh, we'll get some things rocking and rolling. I right. appreciate you, um, Hugh. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Right. God bless you all for doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you much, brother. Right. Hey, Kenneth. Brother L, you got any you got any closing remarks before we get off of here? Yes, sir. Brother, uh I enjoyed uh <clears throat> the last caller. Uh what he was talking about. Uh uh man, he's right on hit with it, you know. So what we was talking about earlier and uh plus uh I was uh, thinking about also what you uh the science he was breaking down on Wizard of Oz, uh right. the Emerald City with the Federal Reserve Bank. 
Right. I didn't. I, I, that's that's my first time really uh, knowing that. You know. So I said, "Wow." You know. <laughs> And how right, it's just like the straw man, of course, when we look at the straw man, the straw man, of course, is Stromius, um, um, Stromius, um, Homonius, um, okay. what is called Stromius, um, Homonius, which is what is called the straw man. And, of course, we know the straw man is the name spelled in all caps, and dealing with that means that we, we're talking about something in which that is a corporation or artificial entity, and therefore... The straw man had to identify that he had to correlate to that when we seen him because he was looking for a brain. If you have no brain, then actually you're not living. So you have to be something in which that is artificial. The tin man symbolizes the taxpayer identification number, T I N. So hence the social security number, in which that, once again, looking for a heart. If you have no heart, hence, once again, you're not living. So have no brain, have no heart, you're not living. You have to be something which that is artificial. And they brought us into this artificial world, this colorable law, this um, maritime amorality. And it's not that something is wrong with maritime amorality or equity, but the fact is, is that um, a lot of the things in which that they use, which is um, is what appears to be legal, is not lawful. Uh-huh. But they'll use colorable law in order to say that it is legal. But based that on the fact that it's colorable, which means that it's prima facie, which means that it appears to be real but not necessarily is. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, like, so like therefore, legal means fiction, right? Right, exactly. So okay. for example, the tin man and the straw man, they appear to have life. But really without a heart and a brain, you don't have life. Exactly. So, you know, exactly. that's what they are all, that's what this really was symbolic to, brother. And so when we look at the Wizard of Oz, we see that. And, of course, Dorothy had to go with them to the Wizard of Oz because the Federal Reserve Bank is what produced the Social Security card on which that produced um, the birth certificate with the straw man name on it. These artificial um, affidavits, these chattel papers as the brother was talking about and how we actually are still in chattel unless you have declared your nationality and, your, and you have um, proclaimed your birthright, you know, um, um, via affidavits, you know, and have declared us as being um, stateless people as they refer to us during the Katrina disaster as refugees in our own land. Mm-hmm. Um, that should be telling us something. Because the word refugee um, means that you was, you know, that you are not from that particular um, land mass, you know what I'm saying, or that particular area. And if you notice, uh-huh. um, as they're referring to the people of Katrina, of the Katrina disaster in St. Lo- um, um, in, um, New Orleans, um, you would see that not only did the people suffer, and of course, George Bush waited five days to go in there, and of course, um, Hagen, um, Nagin, um, called him out on that, you know, and told him to get his ass down there in order to secure the rights of the people and make sure that they had water, clean water, and make sure that they had food. And now they brought his behind up this year on allegations, um, you know, you know, or put forth the fact that. Um, he was embezzling and he was um, misappropriating funds and everything, and they got his behind finally. You know well, what I'm saying? I, I so, yeah, 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 yeah. They did that just this um um just this past year. Oh. You know, so um um you know um uh, within this last year, I should say. So they did that in order to get him back for telling George Bush obviously to get his ass down there and to take care of the people, because obviously he was agreeing with Cayenne West at the time that. Um, that Bush don't like black people, <laughs> you know, so whatever the case was, um, we see that, you know, things are bigger than what appeared to be. Um, they did siege, you know, under siege, you know, when the um, when the area was underwater, you know, they was able to say, well, this is maritime, this is that morality, so everything is under siege, so therefore, um you know, um, this whole area now we claim as part of amorality a maritime. All mm-hmm. right. So, I mean, these, these are the little gimmicks and tricks that was used in order to steal the land 
of the original people in which they had to be referred to them as refugees. You know what I'm saying? Um, we know that they were not refugees, that they are actually are in their own homeland, you know, but because they did not have a nationality and did not have a decisive citizenship because we're not U.S. citizens, just based on the Dred Scott case, um, it states that we are not U.S. citizens, nor will we ever be. And so, since that is the case, um, ruling by Judge Tanny, it makes us, it makes it inevitable that we have to declare a nationality and declare our citizenship. Exactly. You know, we can't be, we can't keep being um, seen as Article One, Section Two of the Constitution as being three fifth human. We have to put ourselves right. back in full life. We we got to get out of civilist more tools. We can't keep being seen as being dead in the eyes of the law civically. We have to get back in um, for life. We have to declare our nationality. We have to declare our citizenship. And we help with this process, brother um, um, L, as you already know, you know, exactly. um, oh, yeah. as being as being Washita, you know, um, and being that it struck um, Louisiana um, and Portions of those lands belongs to um, the Louisiana Purchase, in which that has been documented based on United States Supreme Court case laws of King versus the United States, of the um, Henry Turner versus the United States, and the heirs of Henry Turner versus the United States, in which that um, two of those law cases actually was one, actually won in court, you know, in eighteen, um, in um, um eighteen um, forty eight and eighteen fifty. We won in court in which they proved that the United States never purchased the Louisiana um, so-called purchase uh -huh. and that Thomas Jefferson was well aware of the fraudulent land deal in which that supposedly bankrolled it from, um, 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 from France to Spain to um, the United States, which actually France and Spain never owned the territory. What Spain owned specifically was just a couple of barracks, military barracks, and um, a couple of streets, which one is Bourbon Street, where they still have Mardi Gras, held Mardi Gras on annually. And that's all they actually own. As far as the rest of New Orleans, the rest of the west, um, the rest of Louisiana, and, and more than 13 states, ranging all the way up into the whole of Canada, all of that was part of the indigenous people, the Washita and the Choctaw, um, part of the Iroquois Confederation and Algonquin. So, this is the fraudulent act in which that took place. Uh -huh. You know, so, you know, um, we, we got to bring that to the forefront. And for those who want more information, you can go to the website, to my website, www.drlimelbay. That's D R A L I M E L B E Y. That's drlimelbay.com. And go to the section United Washington Deduct Ammonia. And you will see um, all the information, all the land grants, or the particular land grants, the um, particular um, information concerning um, the forging the land deal called the Louisiana Purchase, actually is known as Washita proper. And you will see that you know the United States do not own that territory. That uh -huh. what they have done is eminent domain, and they have taken it over um, based on eminent domain. But as far as the actual land owners were the people which they referred to as the refugees, but because they had no nationality, they did not know birthright, they did not have citizenship, which is not United um, United States citizen, which is only the 40-mile radius of Washington, D.C., but uh -huh. American citizenship, which means that you make yourself part of one of the so-called 50 states or territories in particular, um, you know, in which that, you know, you become an American citizen, which we already were that prior to Judge Tanney's um, opinion, you know. So, you know, these are just things that we need to know. And so, you know, we often see the wizard, Brother L. That's right. I'm going to watch that movie again. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, bro. Well, we get right. ready to head out, y'all. Appreciate you, Brother L, for coming on being my co-host. I'll be out. Peace and love. Right now. Peace and love. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building.
on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence, and indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence, and indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs> 